Control to all units. We have a burglary alarm activation at the Black Horse Inn in Beamish. CCTV is showing two men on the upper floor. Any unit to respond to 1014 intruders now at the Black Horse Inn in Beamish, please. This is Control standing by. You need to raise your standards, Stas. What do you mean, raise my standards? She's sod. Oh, look at her. Fake tan, painted on eyebrows. God, you said she looked good in that outfit. She'd look better in a bin bag. Now that's a bit harsh coming from a girl who wears nothing but jeans in that god-awful jacket. I mean, why do you insist on wearing that jacket? It's got to be well past itself, I did. It was my dad's. It reminds me of him. I feel safe when I have it on. He was a good copper. Yeah, dad. One of the best. I worked with him once. West Road. Some second division low life decided that you'd kill a girl because you would give him a cigarette. Your dad was a DCI on the job, and he worked that job until there was no evidence left. Don't ask us how he did it, but one day, as an old bloke walked into the, the police station, said he'd seen the murder, pointed a finger at our suspect, and that was enough to get that low life life. I always remember, after the trial, he smiled, winked at us, and got on with his work. Yeah, that was Dad. Good old fashioned policeman. Not many of those left now. All full of gel heads and fake tans. <laughs> yeah, 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 not wrong there, Conley. It's not the job I joined. You got on now? 26 years. 26 years of bullshit. <laughs> so, why did you join the job then? Was it because your dad was in, in that? Well, I guess so. 
He never really talked about the job. It's funny though, because me and my brother, we'd um, take his hat when he wasn't looking and we'd run around playing cops and robbers. Yeah. And then it wasn't long until my brother joined the Met, so I guess policing's always been in the blood, really. And you've done very well, huh? Six years, detective sergeant. Your dad would be so proud. So what's next for the Golden Girl? Specialist crime? Golden Girl? Are you taking the piss? Do you know how hard it is to be a woman on this police force? Any police force for that matter? I'm s sorry, I was trying to pay you a compliment. I wasn't in it, in it, and I wouldn't try to put it down. Oh, piss off, Daz. I knew what you meant, you wally. Thank goodness for that. I could see me next ex-partner and a new complaint. Look, I might be a lot of things, but one thing I'm not is a cop trying to climb the ladder by flashing her tits and a fake smile to every chief inspector in the division. I'll get to where I want to be with good, honest policing, just like my dad. I hope so, Connie. And I hope I'm around to see you. Zulu 40. We have a report of a burglary at the Black Horse Inn on Red Row. Witness reports of stabbing. Ambulance is en route and uniform response are on the way. Suspects are two males wearing dark clothing, made off on foot towards the main road. Can you start travelling, Zulu 40? Zulu 40 travelling. <sighs> well, there goes our quiet shift. Come on, Robocop. Let's go fight crime and grab a bacon body on the way, eh? So what are we looking at? Well, clearly it's murder. There's no question of that. From the position of the body and the pattern of the blood spatter, I would say PC Wade was standing when he was attacked either from behind or slightly to the side. It's most likely he never saw his attacker coming at him. Any idea of the weapon used? The wound is big, much bigger than you'd normally expect from stabbing. Possibly a hunting knife. We'll know more after the post-mortem. What about the attacker? Any idea what we need to focus on? By all accounts, there was two of them. Boot prints in blood over there suggest that one of the attackers wear size nines. Other than that, you're going to have to rely on witnesses and CCTV. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a crime scene to investigate. Listen, I'm sorry. Are you going to be all right? I can get someone to take over from the west if you want. Nah, it's fine. I'd like to sue Chris if that's okay. I need to help find the bastards that did this. Of course. So who's the lady? Wendy Adams. She sometimes comes in early to sort the takings from the previous night. When she got here, she noticed the door was open and the two intruders inside. It wasn't until they ran off that she noticed Chris over there. She was in a hell of a state when we got here. I kept on saying whizzle or something like that. Couldn't quite figure out what she meant, but I'm sure you lot will figure that bit out. So where is she? She's just over there. Wendy. Daz Miller from the CID. Now I know it's hard for you at the moment, but I need to ask you a few quick questions about what's happened here today. Is that all right? Yeah, of course. Is he dead? I'm afraid so. Oh, God. 
Wendy, anything you can tell us that will help us catch the people that did this? Is there anything you remember of the men that came to your pub this morning? Wizzo. One of them kept calling the other Wizzo. I didn't see their faces. They had those masks on that cover the mouth and nose, but one of them said, come on, Wizzo, or hurry up, man, or bro, or something like that. Wizzo? Mean anything to you? Wendy, you've been great. I want to leave you with these guys just now, and I'll speak to you later after we've tidied the place up. Okay? All right. Yeah. Oh, what about the pub? Who's going to lock up? The drayman's coming at 11. Don't worry about the pub. We look after the pub until you get back later. In the meantime, what I would like is I'd like you to go with the paramedics and I'll speak to you later. Badly shaken, no serious injury. But you kept going on about what he called Whizzle. Mark Wisnowski. Whizzle to those close to him due to his uncanny knack of disappearing. Certainly fits with his MO. So you know him? Oh, I know Mark Wisnowski all right. He likes to think of himself as some sort of Bruce Lee playing with his knives. And if he's involved in this, we're going to need all the help we can get. Wisnowski? Wasn't he the one locked up for the murder of FDI a few years back? DCI? And no, that was Andre Wisnowski, the father. Locked up, but never fucking charged an account with some alibi that had more holes in it than an old sock. Andre Wisnowski was later to have been reported in a drug deal that went bad, presumed dead. But his body was never found which has always troubled me, as you can imagine, and many others for that matter. Are you going to be all right, Connolly? I mean, this can't be easy for you. Yeah, I'm fine, Daz. Hearing that name just brings it all back again. See if the Wisnowskis are involved in this, I'm going to nail him and his fucking brother to the wall and put them where they belong for a very long time. Sokol's ready to move the body. I'd like to stay with Chris when he goes to the hospital, if that's okay. Listen, I know it's hard for you and for your shift at the moment, and I know you want to do what's best by Chris, but we need you to step down and leave it to us. What I do need is I need your clothing seized and I need your initial statement. Someone's coming across from the west to take over the scene. If you go to the incident room, We'll see you over there later. All right? Right, come on then, Daz. Sokka can finish up here. We need to find those Wisnowski boys before they do the magic disappearing act. Come on, need to let the SIO know about this. Police are continuing their hunt for two men wanted in connection with the fatal stabbing of PC Christopher Wade here at the Black Horse Inn in Beamish in the early hours of Sunday morning. With me now is Detective Chief Inspector Tony Wright who is heading up the investigation. Detective, what can you tell us about the case so far? Well, what I can tell you is that the case is ongoing at the moment and we have identified two men that we would like to speak to in connection with the murder of PC uh, Wade. Um, Thanks to eyewitnesses and CCTV in the area, we're looking for these two men, Mark and Darren Wisnowski, who we believe were in the area of the Black Horse Inn during the early hours of Sunday morning. And do you think these two men are responsible for the murder of PC Wade? It's too early to speculate, but we do need to know what they were doing in the area at that time. And can I just add that if anybody out there knows the whereabouts of Mark and Darren Wisnowski, they should contact the police immediately. Well, the net seems to be closing in. Were you in the area of the Black Horse Inn on the early hours of Sunday morning? If you were, please call this number. This is George Heron for County News.
Got man up the door. Come on in, why don't you? Don't mind me. Hey, you were only out, Gary. Is anyone with you? What's all the panic about? I was just settling down to watch the telly. There's a new drama on tonight. Hey, bollocks your TV drama. Now ask you a question. Are you alone here? Yes. Yes, of course I am. Now, do you want to tell me what's going on? Shut up. Go as a beer What did you like? Go on. Sleep, We're going to be all right, young Mark. What if that busy heard us? What if he heard us use our names? Us? Use our names? More like you use my name, you bloody idiot! I told you! No names! You're not going to shout mine off for the whole sodden world to hear. It's not like the locals around here don't know who Woodrow is, is it? I panicked, Mark. I saw that cop that come around the corner and my head just went into a spin. Well, if you he heard us, me, shouting at you, well, it's not going to matter much now, is it? Go check the window, make sure no one's followed us here. What do you mean, won't matter now? Mark, Darren. what do you mean? Darren, you're messing me head up. Go and check the bloody window, like I told you, and shut them curtains. There you go, lads. Two cans of special brew. Now, is someone going to tell me what's going on here? Shut up, guy, for fuck's sake. need to think. Go get some crystal sweet. Lousy quid lying in our pockets. Fuck's sake! Listen, Darren. I'll take that something out. Calm down! We'll find a way to disappear, okay? Just like Darren did. Alright everyone, thanks for coming in at such short notice. You should have all heard by now of the burglary at the Black Horse Inn Red Row and the sad news that we lost one of our own yesterday. PC Chris Wade, just out of his probation and on foot patrol, when he stumbled across the robbery, disturbed the offenders who then stabbed him in the neck before running off with the day's takings. Conley, what we got? Thanks boss. So like the DCI said, PC Chris Wade died of his injuries at the scene. Post-mortem is underway, but I think it's fair to say that this is a murder inquiry of one of our own as the victim. From what we know, 
Chris Wade was in the area when the burglar alarm company reported two intruders inside the pub. Chris arrives, unaware that they are still inside, and judging from the state of the scene, some sort of struggle took place. My guess is that Chris was trying to detain the intruders before he was stabbed in the neck, possibly with a hunting knife. The injury was deep and he bled to death within seconds of being stabbed. Pub owner Wendy Adams arrives to sort the day's takings when she finds the two intruders making their way to the door with those takings from the safe. Wendy also reported shouting a name. That name was Wizzo. And I'm sure those of you who knew my dad will be familiar with the Wisnowski family. So our main suspects are these two, Mark Wisnowski and his trusty sidekick brother, Darren Wisnowski. They do everything together and since the disappearance of their father, Andre, Mark, has now introduced his younger brother, Darren, into his seedy world of crime. Boss. Thanks, Connolly. Now we need to find these two before they do a runner. They don't call him Wizard Wolf for nothing. Apparently, he's a bit of a wizard when it comes to disappearing. So we need to act fast. Looks like it runs in the family. Andre Wisnowski was reported missing, presumed dead, soon after the murder of DCI Dryden, two and a half years ago. But if rumour has it, he's very much alive and kicking and living abroad somewhere. And if that's the case, there's no doubt that these two will be making plans to join him sometime soon. So let's get back to doing what we do best, yeah? Catching criminals. Especially these two bastards. I want them in my cells by the end of the day. A murder inquiry has begun tonight after the body of a police constable was found here at the Black Horse Inn in Beamish. Police Constable Christopher Wade was found in the early hours of yesterday morning. Hello, can I be put through to the police, please? Are you alright? Incident room, Detective Lawson. Hello, yes. I think I know who killed the copper. On that estate? The Bentram estate? Yeah. Sarge, I've just took a call from a resident in the Benjamin estate. He saw the news about the murder on the telly. He's just seen the Wisnowski boys run into a nearby flat. They were in a hurry, had a brown paper bag with them. He thinks they might be involved. Benjamin estate? Who do they know on Benjamin estate? Benjamin estate. Shadow what's her face? Mark Wisnowski's ex-girlfriend. God, what's her name? Cheryl Metric. She's been there five months. I had her in last week on fraud. She's currently on bail at the courts. Hear it? 15 angel view. Oh, you're a star. Right, come on, Daz, let's pay Cheryl Watts a face a visit. Conley, quick word in the office, please. Sit down. I'm fine, sir. Well, I know what you're going to say. This isn't about my dad. It's about a murder of a colleague. And yeah, the main suspects just turned out to be the Wisnowski brothers. It's just too close to home for you, Conley. I need this case wrapped up without anyone claiming it's a personal vendetta. In any case, we've been offered the services of Neil Calvert from the West. Neil Calvert? Tell me you're joking, sir. You're seriously thinking of taking me off this case and replacing me with Neil bloody Calvert? I know it sounds like you're being sidelined, but my hands are tied. The Chief Constable wants this case watertight and Calvert is the only bloody DI qualified and available. Listen, you've not heard this from me, right? He's in Tenerife until the weekend. So you've got until Friday to wrap this up. I don't believe this. Okay? Come on, we've got to find the Wisnowski's before the shit hits the proverbial fan.
Cheryl Metric. I'm Detective Sergeant Dryden. This is DC Miller. Can we come in? <sighs> I'm on bail, so I've done out wrong. There's no in here. Not after you lot took everything last time. You even took my iPad and now I can't get on Facebook to see what's what. We wanted to have a word with you about your ex, Mark Wisnowski. Have you seen him recently? Oh, fuck. I ain't seen him since he dumped me for that slag. Candy's fake tits. Oh, false tits and fake tan, that one. What do you want him for, anyhow? Not paid his parking fine, has he? That would be telling now, wouldn't it? <laughs> Mind if we come in? Won't take a minute. Hmm. Hey, you! You can't just barge in like that. You need a warrant or summer. Oi, you! You listening? I told you. I haven't seen him for ages. Okay, you say you haven't seen him. Any idea where I might want to look next? Yeah, Candice. Oh, and if you do see her, tell her she's a slag from me. Feeling that, you might want to try Gary Purvis. Uh, and if he don't know where he's always, then no one will. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, and have you got an address for the Scary Purvis? Yeah, that grotty little flat above the hairdressers. Well, thank you for your help. I'll let the judge know just how helpful you've been. Oh no, don't bother. I don't want everyone around here thinking about grass on the blue benefits now, do we? Oh, and if you see Detective Lawson, tell him I want my iPad back. Okay, and don't bother coming back around here in a bit, you fuckers. Ugh. What? Fuck out of Scarpa. What the? Now, Mark. What? Busy as fuck. Fucking CRG. They're out there. Fuck! Get the gear! Now! Shit! 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 What the fuck are you doing? You wasn't it texting the busies? No, Darren, I wouldn't do Fucking that. Fucking tell me where we are. I'm not grass, little bastard. Darren! Darren, come on now, we're gonna go! Come on! Buddy, what about the money? Darren, come on! One gunshot wound bleeding out. Yeah. Ah! 